what is going on guys so what we are going to be getting into today is i don't know if you can see behind me but we basically have an evo 5 that threw up in my shop we're going to start putting together the new motor um head and everything and block is all built what we're going to do is we're going to put the oil pump on we're going to do the balance shaft delete kit and we're going to start you know cleaning up the accessories and putting them on so what i'm going to show you guys today is i'm going to show you the actual balance shaft delete so there's going to be some random stuff in the beginning of the video that we filmed earlier and then we're going to get right into the oil or uh, the balance shaft delete we're going to do the balance shaft delete step by step and you guys get a good idea of what it takes to do a balance shaft delete on your evo all right guys so before the gopro decides to go dead which i'm sure is probably going to be pretty soon um i wanted to give you guys a little bit of knowledge on why we are deleting these balance shafts and what the balance shafts actually are so as you can see there are two what appear to be gaping holes in this motor there's one right here and there's one right here and those go all the way back into the block now what these two orifices contain is a balance shaft and a balance shaft now what these are are what they call counter rotating balance shafts and we'll get a little bit more into how it works when we grab the oil pump and i show you but you've got one balance shaft here that spins clockwise and you've got one balance shaft here that spins counterclockwise and what that does is it's supposed to dampen the harmonics that most every four cylinder make i know you guys know some four cylinders seem a little bit more buzzy than others some you feel more vibration than others in this instance they utilize these counter rotating balance shafts in an effort to kind of uh, kind of lessen the vibration um and it works however here are the problems associated with these balance shafts now number one this balance shaft is ran from the crankshaft directly there is a pulley that sits on here uh, uh well basically a um a tooth pulley for a tooth belt i can't remember the name of it a cog it's a cog pulley with a cog belt and so you have a belt that runs from here up and around this and then back down again and that belt is tensioned so you have that is number one problem that belt can fail and you lose this balance shaft now when you lose only one balance shaft the other one is still rotating over here and this one is rotating and causing a massive amount of vibration so you can damage your engine very quickly. So things like two-step, launch control, high revs, quick down revs, over revs, can cause this belt to break and you'll lose that balance shaft. Now this balance shaft is actually operated off of the secondary gear of the oil pump. And I'll bring that over here and I'll show you guys in a couple of seconds, but it allows for this balance shaft to spin counterclockwise as the crank is rotating clockwise now that will give you the counter rotation between the two shafts and ultimately they cancel each other out and they cancel out the vibration within the motor itself now the failure that can come with that is it's actually a lot of stress on the oil pump so you're trying to rotate this mass of basically cast iron with the secondary gear of the oil pump so if you're constantly doing up revs down revs two-step stuff launch control stuff you always run the risk of prematurely wearing out your oil pump. So what we do is there's actually a kit that we got from MA Performance, those guys are amazing. The kit eliminates those, and the way that you eliminate those, and I wish I could take this thing apart to really show you guys in depth what needs to be done in the block, but I could probably grab my flashlight here and we'll be able to see inside. So down inside the bore, you'll see a little hole just to your right inside the bore now that is normally where the bearing of the balance shaft gets its oiling from there's also another one down there in that bore that oils the secondary journal of the balance shaft now what ma performance does is on the side here there are plugs and when you take that plug out you can see that it's pretty much directly in line with the oil hole so what they do is they drill and tap that oil hole and they plug it with a little Allen head bolt. And they do the same in the rear. Also do the same on this side, except this side is slightly different in the fact that there's only one bearing in there. And instead of that bearing having an oil hole, it's basically just a, a round bearing. And once you press it in place, it seals up the oil hole. 
so that you don't have oil pressure issues. Now that's the other thing that tends to happen with these engines is once you break a balance shaft or a balance shaft wears out, when it wears out, you then have excessive oil clearance in the two galleys on the left balance shield and the one galley on the right balance balance shield, balance shaft. When you get that excessive clearance, you start losing oil pressure. So you'll drop oil pressure at idle, you'll drop oil pressure at high RPM, and the balance shafts will kind of be dancing around in there making all kinds of racket, which in turn can mess with knock sensors and, and all kinds of other stuff. So deleting these balance shafts on a high horsepower application is almost an absolute must. You cannot get away for very long without having some sort of failure related to the balance shafts. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring the oil pump over and I'll show you guys real quick how the secondary shaft is operated and how it rotates counterclockwise. And we'll also show you what we have to do aside from the stuff that's already done in the block in order to eliminate the oil pump side balance shaft. So I popped the front cover, the oil pump, whatever you want to call it, onto the motor. Not permanently, but just so I could show you guys exactly what I'm talking about with this oil pump driven uh, balance shaft. So now you can kind of get a better idea of how this drives that balance shaft. And you'll see that there's a seal there. That seal would normally be where the balance shaft gear would come out and then the cogged belt would actually go over and down. So what we're going to end up doing first things first is we are going to replace that seal with that guy. And we're going to plug up that hole. So that seal needs to come out and in its place we'll put basically that plug that I just dropped on the floor. But we'll put that plug in there. That'll seal off this balance shaft hole. Now, here's what I was talking about with the oil pump side. So this right here, guys, is the oil pump. And when we rotate the oil pump clockwise, what we can see is if I get the flashlight in here, what you should hopefully be able to see, maybe, is inside that bore right there, and we'll try to do this, you'll see a little flat spot inside that bore. And as I rotate clockwise, that pump gear is rotating counterclockwise. Now that shaft, that flat in that shaft, meets up with the balance shaft. And then the balance shaft goes through, and then there's this little bolt that retains the gear to the balance shaft, and that's what operates the balance shaft. So you could see how we're putting pressure on here to spin the oil pump. We're then rotating a giant balance shaft, and should that balance shaft get bound up, it's gonna put excess pressure on the oil pump, which is driven by the timing belt, which can cause the timing belt to skip and jump and all kinds of other happy stuff. So again, like I said, guys, high horsepower stuff, it is almost an absolute must to get rid of these balance shafts. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off of the actual engine. We'll pull this whole case off the engine and I can show you guys what it is that we have to do to basically eliminate the balance shaft. There is the back side of that oil pump housing that we were just showing you and I will rotate clockwise and you will see that runs counterclockwise. See if we can get some light in here again. You will see that down in that bore, it rotates clockwise if I spin counterclockwise. And if I go clockwise, that spins counterclockwise. So what we have to do now is this is normally where your balance shaft would be. And if you can imagine the balance shaft is probably, I don't know, a foot long sitting off the back of this thing. So what we do in its place is, believe it or not, in some of the older Mirages, Mitsubishi Mirages, they had the two liter that was non-turbo that didn't have balance shafts and everything else. So what they had was this part right here. This is actually a factory Mitsubishi part. And you'll see that it is slotted on that end, just like the, uh, just like the balance shaft would be. And, and guys, I'll show you a balance shaft in future videos when we tear the other motor down. But this is basically the, the very end of the balance shaft. So what we'll do is we're gonna slot this in here and you'll be able to see when it drops down right there. So now that is slotted into place. So what we do is we take the oil pump and we turn it over, making sure that we hold that in. And we're going to take 
the bolt that came out of our original balance shaft and for the video we're just going to kind of screw this in loosely because we want to make sure we lock tight that and then once we lock tight that it's good to go so then there's a little o-ring that goes in here and there's a little castle nut that goes in there or a crown nut or a crown cover whatever you want to call it that goes in there it screws in and it covers this area here to stop any oil leaks that are coming through and vice versa so once we get that done now what you have is you have basically a deleted oil pump side balance shaft and once we start putting all of this together now unfortunately on the factory motor the motor that came out of the car the oil pump gear is broken so we got to get an oil pump gear the crank position sensor was broken so we have to get one of those there's a bunch of stuff on this engine guys that was broken so we're gonna have to get some new stuff we got to make a list of stuff we need to order so that we can actually put this thing together um yeah all right guys so here's everything with the balance shaft deleted um you can see this plug right up in the corner here this is where the original balance shaft drive gear would be for the left side balance shaft or the front of the engine balance shaft this one over here this is where the balance shaft goes behind the oil pump we installed our little nubby shaft there the stubby shaft and uh you know put everything in bolted it down loctited it and then we went ahead and bolted the whole oil filter housing right to the block so everything is good to go all right so i'm going to show you guys on this old engine where everything is and unfortunately the pulleys are broken so we can't really see but you normally have this little guy this little piece right here is a cogged pulley if you can imagine it's right up in that general vicinity right there that's the rear balance shaft that's the front balance shaft so i flip-flopped it on the other engine but again if we spin the oil pump which is pretty much seized up at this point so i can't spin the oil pump but balance shaft is back there balance shaft there then you had this little belt that ran up to that to that can't talk today it's sunday i'm tired that little belt ran up to there then you had a little tensioner that screwed in like yonder right there and that tensioned that belt up so we have eliminated all of that because well actually you know what i should be able to show you guys what the balance shafts look like without having to take this engine apart so inside this <laughs> this block right there is one of the balance shafts and you can see or maybe you can't but you can see it's kind of a oh, let's see if we can rotate this hold on a second guys get some vice grips on there we'll see if we can rotate that shaft There we go. You can see the balance shaft rotating in there. This is the one that spins counterclockwise when you spin the pump clockwise. So you kind of get a good idea of what that one looks like. And then we'll move over to the other side, to the rear of the engine. And you can kind of see right inside there's the other balance shaft, which is obviously seized solid because there's a giant hole in the block. But they run through those two sides and counter rotate to balance out the harmonics in the engine and they actually tend to do a pretty good job for daily driving but again like i said high horsepower applications a lot of two-step stuff high rpm stuff it's a good idea to get rid of those like we did over on this guy all right guys so before we end this one i actually have to clear up a little mistake that i made i misspoke about something when we did the lsd in this car the lsd actually replaces the viscous coupler as well as the front differential it does not replace the center differential which is inside of the transmission now the center differential is just a couple of spider gears it's inside the transmission and it just biases power front to rear so what i misspoke was that adam will now have a complete 50 50 distribution front and rear that is not true necessarily now the rear did have a viscous coupler to take up some of the slack from when you launch the car 
we've eliminated that viscous coupler. So we are now relying solely on the center diff. Now the problem is, is we could lock up the center diff. We could put a spool or another LSD in there or what have you, but it's going to make this car very undrivable on the road. So yes, we do have a center diff that does distribute power front and rear. If this vehicle, all four tires are on the ground and are spinning at the same rate of speed, then you do have a perfect 50-50 split. However, if you should pick up a front wheel or you pick up both front wheels, like let's just say in a jump scenario, then the biasing is going to be slightly different. But it is as close to 50-50 as possible without completely locking the drivetrain solid. So I just wanted to clear all that up for you guys that might be a little bit confused about it. And a commenter actually pointed it out to me. He was absolutely correct. So yeah, so we clarify that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just a little bit about us, you know, deleting the balance shafts on these 4G63s. Again, I keep reiterating that this is kind of like a high performance mod. It's something you want to do if you're going to be running high RPM, if you're going to be running two step, if you're going to be running something where the engine is going to be in an operational area outside of its normal specified ranges. And uh, it'll also help in the longevity of the motor itself. So good idea to do it. But again, you got to have the motor out when you do it. And while you got it out, you might as well replace the oil pump, the water pump, everything else that goes with it. So it can be, you know, the parts are cheap to do it, but it can be an expensive job because you're pulling everything apart anyway. It's a good time to do everything else. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're going to keep moving. I'm putting accessories on this. We keep finding more and more broken stuff. So we're going to have to order some parts. Unfortunately, we got the wrong water pump. So we're going to have to get a new water pump for it and a few other odds and ends. So we may not be putting anything else together until probably Tuesday and then hopefully getting it up in the car and getting everything good to go. So Stay tuned, guys. We'll have another episode for you. Probably going to be something where I'm putting the rest of the accessories on this motor. We got to clean everything up. We got to throw everything in the parts washer before we can put it on because we don't want to put that oily, dirty crap on this brand new motor. So, again, I'm done rambling. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.